Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. Switch Cube Advance Gaming here. Welcome back to episode 2 of Should You Buy, the show where we spotlight a random game on the eShop or physical and tell you whether or not you should buy. Today's featured game of the week is none other than Rocket League by Psyonix, ported by Panic Button on the Nintendo Switch. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First off, we have got the graphics and frame speed. When you are playing handheld, you get a nice 720p and 60fps. And when playing docked, you get 1080p, 60fps. So no matter what, you are playing at the same frame rate. The only exception of this is when you play tabletop split screen, you do drop down to 30fps rather than 60 so, with the technical aspects aside, let's jump right in. The bulk of the game will be played online in either competitive or casual matches, and the bulk of that will be competitive for most players. The game does have a very live and active player base, especially being a cross-platform game, so it will never be hard to find any kind of online matches. You will always find matches usually within, within 10 seconds on most occasions. This mode is extremely fun and has made it to where it has been easy to play over a hundred hours of this game for the small $20 price tag that it does cost. There is in-app purchases such as key and different special event cars or sets of equipment that you can use in your game. Once again, none of these required to play and or win but you have nice little featured cars like the Batmobile or the DeLorean Time Machine. Then you do have little Hot Wheels cars that have been put in there. You have different chargers from Fast and the Furious. A 70s Dodge Charger. A 99 Nissan Skyline GTR R34. And these are just some of the different cars that you can get. And they do obviously come with uh, plenty of different decals and such that you can use. Personally, I have gotten the Batmobile and the DeLorean. I can't say they are fun to play, but obviously not required. Now on to some of the single-player modes. The biggest one will be Season Mode, where you pick a type of match you want to play, whether it be 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s, or 4v4s. You pick a difficulty, a season length, how many playoff teams you want, either 4 or 6, and you pick Continue. You can do everything from change your team logo to change your team name your teammates names and then you just start off start off the season and you can play through a season get rewards from it not much here except just a generic structure season for you to enjoy it is a fun mode if you are saying a long car ride and you just need something to kinda of play through definitely will keep you entertained for that it is standard matches however you'd play them with however many players you have picked for this. Um, I will say the most fun mode in this one definitely is the 4v4s, because going 4v4 with a bunch of bots is chaotic, it's crazy, and it's just a lot of fun. Next, you have got regular exhibition matches. These are just normal matches. You set the settings, set how many comms you want, and you just play a generic match. This game really is not meant for single player, thus why there's not as many modes for it but it does have a plethora of multiplayer modes. A few more of the multiplayer modes include Drop Shot, where you are on an open hexagon and you have to try to open up holes in the floor to score in. Rumble, where you are given items every 10 seconds and you have to try to score goals or take out your opponents with the items. Snow Day, where the ball is now a puck. Hoops, where it is a basketball instead of a normal soccer ball and you have to shoot it into raised up goals or hoops and Rocket Labs, where you are placed on different stage types rather than the generic oval cage and have to try to play it out on different stage types. This is aside from the solo duels, 2v2 doubles, 3v3 standard, or 4v4 chaos, or 3v3 solo standard. All in all, the modes are quite abundant and copious none of them really lacking in any kind of enjoyment and for twenty dollars this definitely does hold up for the price along with all these modes that you can play 
You can even track your stats. You can see how many matches you've played, your win rate of those matches. You can see how many times you've done any kind of thing, including doing an upside-down backwards goal. You can see global leaderboards for different platforms, as this is cross-platform, and can see different league rankings throughout the season, including up to the very end. So, all in all, this game is absolutely worth the money and gets a perfect 10 out of 10 on Switch Cube Advanced Gaming. This game was out on all other platforms, PC, Xbox, and PS4. It was ported beautifully to Switch and definitely is worth the $20. I've spent much more than $20 and don't regret a single penny of it. So that's it, folks. The answer to the question, should you buy Rocket League, is a definite, definite yes. We will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh,